guys are up next. Okay, I got these from Facebook Marketplace. I bought it from a guy and his mum purchased it and sort of just scuffed it up, but she has got, there's lots of squigglies all in it. So I need to clean it, rinse it, and then start sanding it just to give myself good adhesion. They're particle board mixed with, you know, trim parts, veneer on the sides, that sort of thing. It's your pretty builder standard, no name brand sort of nightstands, but I'm gonna be putting my own base on it. Let's get into it. It's been a minute since I said that. I've been editing and somebody noticed and said to me, you forgot to say, let's get into it. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I do say that a lot. Um, so there you go. Let's get into it. Now, I don't have to draw a line, I just have to follow that line all the way down. So, let's see how I do. <laughs> okay, that was a progression. Right, I started off taking the base off, which was fine. I only have a, um, what's this thing called? Oh, for Pete's sake, if I didn't want to talk about it, I would be able to. Jigsaw! Oh, crappy. Okay, I only have a jigsaw because my uh, circular saw broke and I haven't replaced it yet. I will one day. But the jigsaw worked fine. Cut the sides off. Then, to be frank, I just didn't like that trim around the middle. I think it can, the dresser can pull it off without it. It just, um, dated the piece a little bit. I did leave the trim on the top but what happened is because I pulled the trim off the sides it left a deep cutout in the sides of the nightstands so I filled those in with Bondo. I ended up leaving the nails just sticking just out just a little bit and used it as rebarb going to let that bondo dry overnight i'm going to come back and i'm going to give it a second go round i already know that i'm going to need to give it a second go round which is totally fine but i'm i'm happy with the progress so far once that happens i'm going to build finish building out a frame for the bottom where my new base will go i already have a front and a back piece of wood on there but I just need to frame out the sides just so it's a nice rectangle for my base, my new base to go on to. Oh my word. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, I started off not doing a whole lot and then I've ended up doing a whole lot. But that's the way it goes sometimes. So it's gonna be another day of prep, another day of repairs, sorry, then a day of prep, prime, and then I'm gonna get to painting so I've still got another two days before I get to the fun stuff that's all right I'll see you in a second my workshop looks a little different I cleaned up over the weekend and made myself a big open space and a backdrop wall so you guys don't have to look at my mess <laughs> trying to improve myself Okay, so these guys have had two coats of shellac, two coats of primer. I have fixed 
the bases and glued and I've also popped um, two pieces of wood just to give more stability to the base and I've also you can see right down in here is just a little triangle piece that I've glued and screwed into here and here to give it more stability stability is the key here <laughs> right now what I need to do is make the base so we're going to have straight legs at the back and then our shaped legs for the front and then our three pieces the two sides and the front skirting what I need to do first is measure how tall the end table is I'm going to find my tape measure it's about 22 and a quarter and I want it about 28 and then that will determine how long of a leg I have I have cut all the leg pieces I'm going to cut the sides now so I need to measure You know what make my life easier? Oh, I just rolled all the way from here, all the way to my saw. Because then... Okay. Ten and three eight. Now I have to pocket hole all of that and then glue it and screw it into the base and then I'll be ready to paint. Yay! As I always do, I don't know if you can see that, I always mark where I want my um, who's he what's he's. What are they called? <laughs> what are they called? Pocket holes. Oh lord. My drill does not like pocket holes. I want to make sure that the leg, because I've done this before, where I've put it on backwards. So it's going into that side.
What I'm doing today is putting on a base layer of the weathered wood. Now I know even though DIY paint is very pigmented, I'm still going to need two coats and I ultimately want the nightstands in black. I don't have enough black. What I have is I mixed up little black dress and old school which is like a black and a chalk, chalky black colour. And I mixed those together in a sample pot and I had probably just under a full pot of that which wouldn't be enough to do two coats on here. So I needed a dark layer, weathered wood is my first layer of dark. Not only that, it's gonna cling really well to the, the um, primer on this. So I stippled that on, I, brush stro uh, I did brush strokes and stippling just so I got texture. I'm looking for texture. And the reason that I'm looking for texture is because when I was sanding it, this is MDF, right? And the person that I bought it from, his mum, sanded it, but it had a lot of the squiggly lines in it. Uh, I tried to give it a go to smooth it out and I wasn't going to sand it away to nothing so I just gave it a sand but even well definitely through the shellac and the first primer coat you could still see the squiggly lines so I did a second one just to create that extra thickness and then putting the brown on is going to give me another thickness layer again to just just get rid of all of those squiggly lines. I'm gonna let that dry and then come in tomorrow and do my black layer. It's now the next day, the brown layer has dried and what I'm gonna do now is go in with that mixture of the little old, the little old, <laughs> the little old school old school and little black dress. I've mixed those in together and I've got just under a full sample pot. And I am going to go in with a chip brush. I want a natural bristle brush, but I don't want it too thick of a brush because a thicker brush will just soak up all that paint. I don't have a whole lot of paint, so I need to be spreading this <laughs> one little sample pot over two pieces. And I know I'm going to be able to do it because DIY paint is really pigmented. If you haven't watched me use this before or know nothing about DIY paint, it is a clay and chalk based paint. It is really pigmented so a little goes a long way. So you can water it down a little bit and you're still going to get that deep rich colour. The thing is though, because it is a clay based paint, when it goes on it's dark and rich and beautiful. But as you can start seeing it dry and it's drying around here on the front, it is getting lighter. But don't worry about that because once you put a top coat on or wax, it brings back the richness of colour. DIY products are now available on my website you guys. You can head down into the description, follow the link over to 445 Designs and get your products over there. Okay, I am really happy with this. I'm loving the texture. The coverage on this is spectacular. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then I'm going to come back in and we're going to do a little gorgeousness on the front of the drawers. And oh, we can't forget about her legs either. We're going to fix her legs. So we'll not fix them. We're going to stain them, I think, this time. All right, you guys. See you in a minute. Using Durham's water putty and some of my paint from the nightstand, poured a little bit in there and now I'm mixing it up. Great suggestion by my but friend need more Mel paint. from Color for Boost Creations. Look how pigmented the DIY paint is. Like, that's crazy. Not watered down at all by it. Crazy good.
Okay, I kid you not, I stressed over this. It's been a week and a half. So that big, like a few weeks ago, I told you guys that I had like a big head start for Australia. I had like four videos filmed. Well, now I'm only two videos ahead because I've stressed about this piece for that long, thinking that it was going to be horrible. Anyway, that and that piece. These two pieces have like had me frozen and stressed for no good reason. That looks amazing. Okay. Such a relief. And there it is. That's wet and that's dry. But it looks so good. What was I stressed about? I don't even know. Yeah, it'll go up and down, up and down. It'll what? Go up and down. got me this from my Amazon wishes. It is a spray tent, you guys. This came at a perfect time. Thank you so much. Now I just have to figure out how to put it up. <laughs> While I'm doing thank yous, I want to say thank you to Tracy Rice. Taryn from Elegant Upgrades and Nevat who bought me coffees over on the Buy Me A Coffee app as well as Teresa who also bought me these from my Amazon wish list. You guys spoiled me rotten with the well wishes and the gifts and I am just blown away and so grateful.
So Whoa. next week's piece is <laughs> this. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. You'll get notified when that video goes up. And if you're curious, I have memberships. The join button is below. You can click on that. There's a little video telling you about what you get. And in the video, I say at least twice a month, I will have videos up for you guys to view early. Well, I'm happy to tell you. <laughs> I have met that deadline every single time. I have not missed it. So the videos are now up, ready for members to view ahead of time. There's a little perk for the membership. For me, texture is a great workaround when there are squiggles in your finish or nicks or dings. Texture is just a great way to work around those things that, that you can't get out. I loved the finish on this. It was a progression, right? I knew I wanted them in black and then I wanted to do something fun to the top drawer and I told you I stressed about it for like a week but when I finally took the plunge and went for it and did it it turned out great and I really loved it and I was like you crazy person why did you wait so long to do that then I decided just to balance it out I would put that stencil all the way around the bottom so along the bottom drawer and along the sides and that looked great I did the same color on the legs that I did on the stencil and the stamp just to, you know, give it all balance. And then the gold handles, which were just a great little addition back to the piece just to give it a little sparkle. I love these, I sold them, and the lady absolutely loved the texture and the stencil and the stamps, all of it, all of it together. So I was so happy. You know, it's always really nice when you have an idea and you bring it to life and then somebody else likes it enough to buy it, right? As always, I'm so grateful for you guys. If you liked the texture on this piece, you might also like this video. And I hope I see you on next week's piece. Bye, you guys.